Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and it's been a little while since I put up my last video. It's been about a week, but January is typically a really slow month on YouTube anyway because of, you know, their AdSense earnings being cut because it's the beginning of the year and a bunch of different things. They usually experiment with new algorithm changes, so a lot of content creators typically uh, take January as a little bit of a uh, lazy month, and I'm, uh, I'm apparently no different, but... So to start uh, recording again, I've just uh, decided to go in with another shot of this uh, Necro's Zodiac deck. Now, this was the last video I played, but that was about a week ago, and I didn't do too well with it, so I'm going to basically just be giving it another shot in a different sort of uh, essence. Uh, I found out that you can actually play matches on uh, the Checkmate server, so I'm actually going to be doing that for a little while. Now, I did get the results from that poll that I put up of uh, how I should continue uh, doing these sorts of live commentary dual videos and I'm gonna do a slight variation of what won. What ended up winning was the Discord server method and uh, I'm gonna do a slight variation of that. I might not end up making a Discord server, I might just end up making an exclusive public uh, or an exclusive uh, private Facebook group for the people that do that. But there is a Patreon page that I am making for people who want to support me directly, which I'm currently working on setting up as of right now. It might be done and published and ready to be used by the time this video gets edited and put up. And if it is, you will see a link in the description or a link at the end of the video. But anyway, I'm not really talking about this deck too much because it's pretty it's pretty obvious and self-exclamatory, at least it should be. It's a Necro's deck trying to use the Zodiac engine to gain a bit of extra steam, allow you to make Digesto Emeralds more readily to keep resetting your resource pool, as well as you know making defensive lines in the form of Drancia, backing those up with things like Valkyrus, using Valkyrus to turbo into your deck. Basically, the Necro's engine is a very minor player in this, even though it takes up quite a large part of the engine. It's very highly impactful what you do with the, with the uh, Necro's engine and the Necro's cards, but the main substantial backbone of your play lines are going to be heavily Zodiac Beast focused. Now, there's a few changes that I've considered making to the deck. Cutting Trishula entirely um, was something I tested, but then I ultimately ended up putting it back in. Messing around with ratios uh, is basically what I've been spending a lot of time doing. And ultimately, I think I might want to just drop the maxis and put in like three Terratop and Takatomborg, as well as an Invoker into the extra deck, just to give more access into the Zodiac Beast stuff, as well as Terratop being a three and talk Tomborg being a three means that you have a lot of more manipulability into hitting certain ritual summon levels off of your Valks and stuff like that and your Trishula so that is something worth uh, considering but I'm not gonna waste too much more time in this little deck segment point of the, point of the video I'm just going to jump straight into the uh, the checkmate server match and hopefully it goes rather well but as you see this is the side deck I'm gonna be using I'm not gonna be building uh, too extensive of side decks for these uh, videos because I just feel it's better to just leave them rather generic um, and basically this is a really hard deck to side deck with anyway and I usually build side decks for event specific um, like decks because like things change up until the last day before an event so I usually am a fan of building side decks very flexibly as I go uh, so that's that's gonna be a thing there but I'm just gonna have some generically good side deck cards in the form of like Denko and Twin Twister and stuff like that in the decks that I'm playing for these so you can sort of get an idea of good starting points but anyway Enough rambling on, let us just jump straight into the first game and hopefully this match goes well in the form of Dev Pro slash Yu-Gi-Oh Pro's like checkmate server shared system not crashing on me as it has done in the past. But anyway, let's just jump right in. Alright, so we're in this under match format, so hopefully, uh, hopefully it doesn't crash on me like I said previously. Um, I've had problems in the past trying to play matches on Dev Pro in their ranked server. Um, I am playing in ranked for this. Um, and the reason I was at a higher ranking, and I kept trying to do this, and it kept uh, it kept falling down in ranking because as I would go into side decking, it kept crashing. And there were a couple of games that I was able to successfully make work, uh, but ultimately there were uh, problems. So hopefully we don't have any of those problems in recording. Uh, if we do have those problems, then I guess I'll just go back into jumping into uh, checkmate like single games uh, for the purpose of this video and all future ones uh, because. Apparently people seem to like me uh, playing on the Checkmate server, playing against randoms. And so, I mean, I'm more than willing, like, welling, no, Jesus, I can't speak. I'm more than willing to keep doing that sort of thing, but I'm definitely going to probably try and grind my way up into the higher tier of ranking, um, if that's something that people want me to keep doing, because of the fact that it's just going to make it so much easier for me to actually get quality content on demand rather than just, uh, Rather than just playing through slogging like people that aren't really doing much with their play lines and stuff like that. But as of right now, I'm pretty happy with what I'm playing against. I'm playing against Zodiacs, and that's probably the only time you're going to ever hear me saying that. Um, happy that I'm playing against Zodiacs. 
But uh, he's got the Avarice in his graveyard um, in the form of, what is it, Seasonal Direction, and he's also going to Emerald. And I think the Emerald here might actually not be correct, uh, because depending on what he puts back his Seasonal Direction, might not be live. Well, let's see. He's got a Bullhorn under this. He's got a Viper in his hand. Um, so I guess his Seasonal Direction might be live. And I'm playing with a new mouse, too. I ordered a new gaming mouse, but this thing is kind of, like, ignorant in the fact that it just, uh, it's really really sensitive and I'm not used to that yet so expect a lot of random clicking to happen um, and also its click is very loud which is not something I was expecting when I bought it so it might actually just be something that uh, I can't really do uh, much with but what I am able to do is I'm able to go straight into a unicorn to shut the Drancia off and then I can go into a Valkyrus off of that um, and then I'll be able to tribute the Molmorat make an emerald then instant fusion for Norden bring the emerald uh, bring the Momorat back and uh, do that sort of stuff so I've got a really extensive play line uh, but basically I've got to kill these first that's the that's the first the first and foremost thing now if he's smart he's already like he knows that the Drancia is going to basically be irrelevant anyway oh dimensional barrier okay so I'm actually just gonna lose to this <laughs> so I can't play my turn well, ain't that a piece of shit. Alright, well, I could instant fusion into Norden and do, like, almost nothing with it because the Drancia is still there. Uh, yeah, this is... Ooh. That's that's so... I, I lose the single trap. That's, that's not <laughs> something I'm happy about, so I guess I'll just try to play this out. But, I mean, I'm just gonna get uh, Drancia now, so that's a problem. This was the last card I was expecting it to be down there the single trap in the form of dimensional barrier. So the rest of his hand isn't even back row, but I just lose this one. Um, so I guess that's fine. I mean, it's not fine. Let's be completely honest here. It's not fine. I wonder if I could just uh, uh, zoom my way into Utopia the Lightning and uh, zoom into battle phase and see if he doesn't Drancy at me because then he won't be able to Viper uh, because Dev Pro's, uh, Dev Pro's command system is, uh, is or not Dev Pro, I keep calling it Dev Pro. It's Yu-Gi-Oh Pro. It's 100% Yu-Gi-Oh Pro, the Percy client. So yeah. I just lose here. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, so I'm just going to not waste any time, and I'm just going to go straight into the uh, into the side decking for the next game. So what I've got to deal with here is I've got to deal with um, I've got to deal with dimensional barriers. But he's also playing Zodiac, so like I want to use Max C in the main. Uh, so I've got to deal with this in some way, shape, or form. I'm going to be going first. So honestly, this deck is rather kind of built to go first. Um, the only thing I would probably change is the max C's for Twin Twisters, just so that I can have something to access to answer back row, um, since I am going first, and I'm definitely going to keep the emptiness in. So yeah, I'll definitely do that. That's a that's a that's a good swap that I think is fine. Um, if I was doing something like Dinko's going second, I'd be taking out like a Senju and the Viper, um, just because I don't want too many conflicting normal summons. But hey, it actually didn't crash on me. Good, 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 and I get to start with uh, Zodiacs. So that's. That's nice. That's nice and neat. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll just do the elemental triangle uh, nonsense and go up into the multiple uh, the multiple uh, exceeds play lines that you have access to. So this should be fine. Now the thing is that I don't have anything other than a Valkyrie as far as defense, but I guess that's fine because I'll have Drancia as well. So there is that as a like astute ability to uh, to be able to protect the Drancia that I'm going to have on board. Uh, but I'm not going to be able to do anything as far as, well, I could summon Valkyrus, but then that would mean that I'm not using, uh, I'm not using these to make Emerald, which would be kind of a ball ache, if I do say so, in the, uh, in the, like, most, uh, most honest way, but, so we'll search for the Viper, uh, because the Viper is, like, necessary. I don't really think it's necessary, but it's just an extra card, so you might as well play it. I wish we had, like, a Beast Warrior <laughs> that, uh, that could search Ritual cards. Like, something like Luna like Black Sheep that can search Poly. I wish we had a card like that for Rituals. Or just, like, a Beast Warrior that can, like, alter its levels in hand or something. Like, I know that's very, uh, that's very, like, uh, like, selfish to ask for. But, I mean, honestly, let's be real here. Let's, let's be the realest we can be. And just say that, like, it's, it's kind of hard to play this deck even with this engine. Even though it does allow you to make, like, Emeralds out the wazoo. Um, it's just, it's not something that's overly powerful because of the fact that the engines don't mesh that well, even though they do operate on the same basis of 
resetting resources. Uh, that's honestly the only real thing that allows these engines to work together, is the fact that Emerald is such an equalizer, uh, and then Drancia is just a good defensive line. Uh, but that's an excess. That's actually, whoa, that's actually really good. Yo, okay. So what I get to do here is I get to use this mirror now, um, and I can summon the Valkyrus, and I can remove this from Grave and tribute this from Hand to summon, and then the Exa can use its effect. So now I'm losing access to the Valkyrus as a defensive line in Hand, but I'm using it as an accelerant for my play lines on board. Uh, so that's that's the biggest thing here that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to dig into uh, into more uh, like powerful things now. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of. I want to keep the Trishula in case you try to Drancia this. So I'm gonna get rid of these two cards because I can. Um, I could shuffle this back into the deck. Well, no, I think I just want to get rid of the Viper. Yeah, I'll just get rid of Viper. It was free, um, so I'm not too worried about it. And I've got that as well, so I can instant fusion into another Emerald if I wanted to, um, and that would reset my resources even further. Uh, but I think I'm going to just keep it as it is for now, because I can just use the Drancia as a defensive line. I really wanted to get into something like Twin Twister or Emptiness, but ultimately that's not going to be what we got. So we'll just have to work with what we got. But I do have multiple Momorats left in the deck. Um, so the Elemental Triangle here is going to be really good. Uh, because I'll be able to Emerald, and then I'm basically not even worried about doing the Tigris to reattach Momorat play on this. Or even if that gets stopped, then I have something like Elemental Triangle that I can use to get free resources. Or I can use Elemental Triangle uh, to put Drancia back. Oh, okay. So see, the Drancia is now not even a defensive line because of, uh, because of that. So that is an issue. But I've still got the Trishula in hand, so I think it's fine. Um, because he's going to be able to go into Invoker and do his stuff uh, with the Zodiacs. But like I said, if he tries to... He has no knowledge of this Trishula in my hand. So if he tries to pop this with Drancia, at any point I'll just be able to Trishula it um, to prevent the target from occurring. And then uh, hopefully we can keep going from there. Because he has to deal with both of these with his, own, with his one Drancia. Um, with his Drancia and his Rank 4. He has to deal with all three of these, and if I'm able to stop him from dealing with one of them, uh, then that's a uh, then that's a huge asset, because in an ideal world, what he's going to try to do is use a rank 4 to attack over Emerald, and then, uh, because the Invoker's not big enough, and then he's going to use Drancia to pop one of these, and then pop one the next turn, potentially. Or, like, he's basically just going to have to use... He, the ideal play line that I'm seeing that he has um, is popping two of this with Drancia, uh, two of these with Drancia, and then attacking over the other one. But he could just have something else that just makes it much better for him. I'm surprised that he kept Kaijus in. Well, no, actually, I'm not surprised because he knows I'm playing Necros. So, like, Kaijuing over Unicor or a Colossalus is really strong. Um, so I guess there is that. But that is something that I should probably do if it gets to the next game or later in this game is that I should actually just start sticking Unicor and protecting it. Um, because of the fact that I could just prevent this entire Zodiac play from happening. Um, that's actually something that, for some reason, I didn't really focus on my thought process until just now, where I could have literally just put Unicorn on the board and protected it. And, like, that's that's one of the easy things this Necros deck is capable of doing, is putting a card like Unicorn or Fossilus out and then protecting it. But, so, he's got the Bullhorn search for Viper, I'm assuming. And then he's going to do this. Now, I have no knowledge of what other, what other things he's playing. He's probably just playing Zodiac Kaiju, uh, honestly. But I have no knowledge of anything that he's playing um, outside of the Zodiac Beast engine and the Kaiju. So it could just be a bunch of traps. But then again, there was apparently a ton of monsters stuck in his hand on the previous turn. Because of the fact that, like, he... Or, not the previous turn, the previous game. Because he only set one card, even after resolving Emerald. So he had, like, four cards in hand. And none of them were things that you would that he would set. So there were the spells that did nothing, which I still think you probably set them just to just to make the you know twin twister or MST or something like not as big a factor. Like it's a it's a it's a mind game thing. It's a threatening thing. So even if they were all spells, I think they would probably all still be set. Um, but they were just all still in hand, so they were monsters. Uh, so what is he going to target? He's targeting the Valk here, and so I'll use the Trishula um, to prevent it. From, uh, from being destroyed, and then next turn, if this gets destroyed again, I'll still be able to just do my Emerald and Zodiac Beast play line, um, because even if the Emerald dies, I'm not worried about it, because I've got two Emeralds left in my deck, I can Instant Fusion Norden, bring back Molmorat, and do the entire Zodiac Beast play line with, uh, with very minor 
um, things. Or I could do instant fusion for the other emerald, shuffle back everything else, and then uh, and then that would allow me to do uh, some other things. But so yeah, so this is gonna attack over by emerald, and then nothing else gets answered. He's got to use the Drancia. Oh, he's banished my emerald. That's a problem. That means that my uh, that means my uh, resource pool is no longer infinite, uh, which means that I actually have to address this uh, sooner rather than later. But he has given me a kaiju, and he's going to probably pop my Valkyrus here. Yes, Valkyrus is being popped, uh, which is fine because that means he's already used his Drancia, which means that I can now go into. Uh, I've got Bullhorn and Drancia and a Molmorat in grave. Uh, so what I get to do here is I get to use Instant Fusion for Norden into Emerald. Um, oh, he's max seeing me. So now I've basically got to commit to killing him this turn, which I think I might be able to do depending on uh, on what my uh, what my hand capabilities are. But so we'll do this into this. I'm going to keep this uh, humongous here now. Uh, that is definitely something that's going to happen uh, because I was going to get rid of it with Elemental Triangle, but now that I'm under max C, I might as well not just give him the free card, um, or give myself the less damage, rather. Uh, but So I've got this, which I can use for some extra damage as well, so there's there's multitudes of things that I can do. All that really matters is whether or not I get, um, like, Veilered. That's the biggest thing that's going to be a, um, a problem, is if I get Veilered. I haven't used my normal summon yet, um, so we'll put these back. Um, I'm not really too concerned. What is this? Oh, it's DD Crow. Man, he's playing all of it. All right. Well, okay then. So we'll activate this and we'll use this to pop itself, um, and we'll bring out a Molmorat. So I'm playing with two Molmorats now, which is problem. Uh, but I can put Viper under Drancia, or I can put Viper under Tigris. I could do a couple of things, but yeah. Uh, we'll do this. Uh, this allows me to summon another Molmorat from deck. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we'll do that. We'll summon another Molmorat from deck um, just to use as a resource, I guess. It doesn't really do anything here, though. That's the thing. It just doesn't. Uh, but, yeah, I'm just going to lose this one. This is 100% a loss for me. <laughs> Let's just be real. Um, so, we can activate this. Uh, I've got to kill the Drancia, and yeah, I'm, I'm just I can't do anything without um, without the Molmorat. <laughs> yeah, this deck sucks in the face of the literal Zodiac Kaiju deck. It probably sucks in the face of everything else as well. Uh, but I mean, damn, like it's it's just something I'm trying to play for fun. It's something I'm trying to experiment with. I mean, experimentation is how you find innovation. Uh, but so from here, like, uh, I don't think there's anything worth doing here other than just ending my turn and at this point he's got like he's got his resource pool reset he still has that seasonal direction I think no that was last game I'm tripping uh, but so like based off what he has access to now in terms of cards in his hand um, is gonna be whether or not I win or lose this game because depending on what goes on I interrupted Kaiju slumber all right as if things were already not getting as bad as they could possibly be um, I'm being given a smaller kaiju. So yeah, I'm just getting the I'm getting the diddle this game. I lost game one strictly to a one. I, I strictly want, lost game one to one card in the form of dimensional barrier. Um, and like that's another just unfair thing about like trying to play a deck like this uh, because like I said in my uh, card review way back on um, on dimensional barrier itself is that the card itself is incredibly unfair to fusion and ritual summoning whereas every other mechanic you basically have to flip it preemptively against pendulums against synchro against exceeds you have to flip it preemptively and it's a minus one to the user in the in the uh, in the benefit of ending your opponent's turn now for uh, for playing it against fusion and ritual decks you have to play a fusion card in most cases that doesn't stay in your hand or that gets burnt if a dimensional barrier is chained to it. So it immediately becomes a one for one for the user of dimensional barrier while also ending your opponent's turn. Um, well, like, that's, that's just incredibly unfair. Like Card quality like that probably shouldn't exist in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because of just how 
incredible it is in terms of just being like, yo, uh, we're just going to have this now. And it's just not going to be something that you uh, that you have any sort of say in the matter of. Ah, oh, Gagaga Samurai. Okay, so yeah, I'm losing this turn. 100%. Um, he normal summon Thoroughblade, though, I think. So uh, because of that, he's not going to be able to like normal summon Viper. So he is literally just playing Zodiac Kaiju. Um, he's playing like the the standard like nine card lineup of Thoroughblade um, and uh, Vipers. Is Thoroughblade even its card name anymore? Um, yes, I would love to check the field just to take up his time uh, and yours because I want to go see. It is still Thoroughblade. Okay. Uh, no, I do not want to check the field. Um, I'm gonna lose. And I'm gonna take it because this is 38 and 33. So yeah, that's 71. So yeah, I lost. Um, 100%. So, yeah, I'm not really too sure what I'm going to continue doing with this deck, but I think I'm going to keep playing on the Checkmate server in match format because while it makes the videos a reasonable length because they can be two games or three games long, it also makes them a lot more focused, and that's something I've always been a fan of in the past is, you know, focusing things, making them, uh, making them very focused into how they are and how they're functioning. So, while it isn't to get multiple matchups, um, it is still just, you know, a decent thing, but so I I just actually lost this one So I lost ranking because I lost this one not because I crashed which I'm perfectly okay with but I'm going to probably grind a bit more um, In the match format or at least in the uh, in the single uh, checkmate server games just to get up in ranking a bit And then I will come back and film some more videos when I've gotten a little bit higher up But it seems like I'm in a good area if I'm playing against Zodiac Beast Kaiju So I'm playing against real things. So I guess there is that but Anyway, I'm going to leave that here. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And if you like this video, definitely be sure to like. And if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing. It helps me out a ton and helps the channel and community within it grow. And it's a really good way to show support if you like the stuff that you saw. But anyway, check out the links on screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might also like. There's a thousand plus uploads over there. So if you can't find something else you also like, I would be incredibly surprised. But as I've already said, thanks for watching. There might be the Patreon page ready for uh, use, and if it is, it'll be on screen right now. A link will be to it, as well as there'll be a link in the description. So if you want to support me directly and have find it in the goodness of your heart to donate and pledge some support, then definitely go check that out. But other than that, thank you for your time as usual, and take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.